Hello, I'm Kim Solez. I'm a physician author from Edmonton, Canada. This is my writing partner, Nikki Olson. We're very pleased to be bringing you this LifeWoot Foundation video on existential risks. In 1959, Richard Feynman conceptualized nanotechnology in his lecture, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, which first identified from the standpoint of theoretical physics the possibility of our manipulating single atoms and molecules. The methods and technology that would allow our being able to manipulate the world effectively at the molecular scale would not become available for many decades. However, soon after Feynman's insight into the possibility of nanotechnology came realization of the many positive and negative implications. Smaller and more flexible circuit boards are one thing that nanotechnology will accommodate, allowing for computers many times smaller and more powerful than those of today. Also, manufacturing of various materials and products will increasingly be done with nanotechnology, which will continue to make the manufacturing process more precise and efficient. Medicine has already benefited from nanotechnology, making it safer and more precise. And in the future, it has been proposed that smart nanotechnology would enter the bloodstream in the form of nano-sized robots, or nanobots. Nanobots would be able to identify and eliminate pathogens, or clean plaque in arterial walls. Environmental remediation, nanoparticles reversing the effects of pollution in the air, water, and on land, is another future promise of nanotechnology. Smart particles would identify and eliminate toxins, thus having highly significant implications given the current and anticipated effects of industry on the environment. Smart and self-replicating nanotechnology is one of the greatest high-tech risks there is. There are many ways that something like that could get away from us and we would be at its mercy. Engineer Eric Drexler, in his 1986 book, Engines of Creation, introduced the idea of grey goo, a hypothetical end-of-the-world scenario where in which out-of-control nanotechnology consumes all the Earth's matter in the process of self-replication. Ways of preventing and managing nanotechnology disasters such as grey goo have been discussed by futurists. One idea has been to build a protective nanoshield, another to build highly sensitive, portable, immune-simulating detection systems to study, predict, and detect dangerous nanotechnology, and also foglets, which could communicate and work together in swarms to counter nanotech disasters. The application of nanotechnology to weaponry, or nanoweaponry, will be many times more powerful than biological warfare weapons of today, and represents another existential risk pertaining to nanotechnology. We are going to make nano weaponry, and these weapons will be more precise and deadly than any biological warfare weapons thus far. And the idea that this could somehow be contained or limited, that's probably not going to happen. Not only will the research in it proceed, but probably the practical applications as well. The discovery of genetics, and its role in heredity in the modern sense, is often attributed to Mendel, who in 1865 first discovered that inheritance patterns of species could be explained in terms of rules and ratios. Then in 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed the structure of the DNA helix, the molecule that carries genetic information from one generation to the next. The Human Genome Project, sequencing the human genome in its entirety, began in 1990 and was completed in 2003. With a better understanding of genetics that results from this information and other projects underway, as well as the anticipated reduction in cost of sequencing, we'll see many new positive frontiers in medicine. The idea of modifying the human genome in such a way as to prevent disease is only one future application of this technology. Future technology movements, such as the transhumanist movement, seek to substantially reduce the occurrence of suffering and disease using genetic engineering and also to improve the human experience more generally, augmenting ourselves with technology. We're going to transcend our current limitations and augment the human experience in unimaginable ways. Some futurists believe that robots will become more advanced than us and that survival of our species depends on augmenting our biology through technology such as genetic engineering. My worry is that if artificial intelligence is allowed to um, develop entirely separately from us, 
and if it develops a lot more quickly than we can alter our biological bodies, then it may become vastly more intelligent, more wise than us, and uh, we'll get left behind. And personally, I don't want to be left behind. I'd rather be up there with the most advanced creatures. Through mutation and natural selection, changes to the human genome occur very slowly, taking thousands of millions of years. With genetic engineering, we can change our genes quickly and radically, which has many unpredictable implications. We are now becoming the objects of conscious design. And the implications of that are just enormous because we've gone, until now, we've been reshaping the world around us. And we can see how dramatically it's been changing. I mean, we've really res reshaped the landscape and we've built a society and altered society and changed everything that's external to us. But somehow we imagined that we were going to remain the same, that there would, that we ourselves were not going to be caught up in this process. And that's not, in fact, true. We are going to remake ourselves. And it's very difficult to deal with because it will rip free all of the anchors that have until now told us who we are as human beings. One can imagine in the clumsy early stages of genetic engineering that mistakes might be made and that there would be doomsday organisms created which could create lethal infections that could not be treated. Just as with nanotechnology, genetic engineering entails many existential risks. One such risk would be genetic engineering used in warfare that would be more dangerous than biological weapons of today. Genetic engineering and nanotechnology are different from existential risks like bioterrorism or nuclear war in that our knowledge and ability to create and use them will be more widespread and their consequences larger. We enable individuals, uh, you know, the next generation of Kaczynskis of the world, that we can't assume that everybody's sane. So my, my, my view is we have to find some smart people to think about this. Maybe there's, maybe there's something I haven't thought of. Futurist predictions regarding when we can expect these technologies to occur are motivating interest groups to start thinking of preventative solutions now. Conferences and summits devoted to singularity subjects bring technology futures together in addressing potential risks resulting from advanced technology. And many foresight groups devoted to a similar cause, addressing research and policy issues regarding dangerous future technology. Also, strategy groups interested in developing clearer and better ways to conceptualize future problems that operate with knowledge of these technology trends in mind. And the newly founded Singularity University, which uses insight regarding technological change to educate and strategize in solving global challenges. The mystic emotion and sense of wonderment that Einstein talks about gives us faith in the potential actions of mankind and lessens the likelihood of these terrible existential risks. As the affluence of technology increases and the prosperity we get from it, so do the risks, and so also we have to increase our efforts in guiding it. Whether the basic goodness of human beings are uh, imagination and our sense of wonderment and mystic emotion will prevent us from doing something that would threaten all of the human race. This is something we can't answer at the moment. But it doesn't mean it's not worth studying. It's probably the thing most worth studying and pondering because there is more at stake in this than in anything else that we study. This has been Kim Sullins and Nikki Olson bringing you our musings on existential risks. <laughs>